1972 was a fairly eventful year. In the US, there was the withdrawal of American troops from Vietnam and the Watergate scandal. In the UK, we had Bloody Sunday, Derby County winning the league and digital watches going on sale for the very first time. 1972 is also significant to me because it's the year I was born and it's also the year that my car was born. This is my very own 1972 classic Fiat 500 and I love it. Bear with me and see if I can start it though. Stop! notice is that this car isn't standard. This car came from a guy in Rome who went a bit crazy on it and a lot of these old Fiat 500s get kind of arbaffed up. They get called the arbaffisti. That means a hotter engine, it's been lowered slightly, uprated suspension, rolled arches, disc brakes on the front and a synchromesh box. So it actually, it's kind of got more power than you need. These originally came with a 13 horsepower air-cooled 479cc engine. I mean, 13 horsepower really isn't a lot, and I don't know how many this has got now, but it's the only car I've ever owned that I've had off the clock. The clock goes up to 130 kph, and uh, frankly, even at the speeds we're doing now, it's bloody terrifying. You might notice on these drive-by shots that it doesn't look that quick, but I can tell you from the driver's perspective, it's plenty quick enough. This one's got a 650 engine in it, which gives it quite a bit more pep, and it really sits super low in the boot and I've no idea what the weight distribution is, but this is a fairly horrible thing to be flinging around corners. But it does sound fantastic. It does mean with two cylinders and being air-cooled, it's got a very narrow torque band, so you really have to stare through these four gears that we've got. The engine, is one thing. The steering and the brakes and your driving position, that's what makes it terrifying. So the steering isn't rack and pinion, it works off these control arms, so it's pretty baggy. This wheel I've got, it's a Nardi wheel, I actually nabbed this off of a V-Spec Unos because, well, it's kind of Italian and it looks pretty, but because it's that bit bigger, all it really does is amplify the bagginess of the whole thing, and you can see doing this and we're not really changing direction a great deal, so that's pretty, uh, that's pretty entertaining. Because of the, the way that the front is set up, it's rear engine, rear wheel drive, your feet are basically in the footwell where the wheels are. So this would be illegal in a racing car, your feet have got to be behind the front axle and here it's basically in front of the front axle. So all that's really in front of me is that tiny little trunk with a petrol tank in it and my feet. So we don't really want to be having an accident. That points to the fact that cars have come a hell of a long way with safety. The wheels, the tyres, it's on 12 inch wheels with Yokohama rubber which makes it really sticky and that kind of takes me on to the handling. It has got more power than it needs. The handling is weird, it's kind of like a Pac-Man, you know when you play Pac-Man and it corners at 90 degrees? It's the same with this because the wheelbase is so short. I thought when I got it, being rear wheel drive, you can only hang the back end out a bit like a tiny weenie 911 perhaps, but of course that absolutely isn't the case. When you corner, there's really nothing happening in the steering menu. Whoop, you're off into the ditch. Would I want to go 200 odd miles in this up to Scotland in the rain? No, I've got other cars for that. At Carfection, we've made films about some of the other cars that I've owned. My Alpha GTV V6, my Porsche 968, and my absolute beloved Mark 1 MX-5 and they all really outdrive this and they're all safer, quicker and probably got a bit more curbside appeal as well. But what I like about this, this is like a window into the past. This is a window into the time that I was created. That means absolutely no concept of safety stuff whatsoever. No real concern about economy or practicality or anything else. This is a really primitive car. Fitted this lovely old Philips radio which I haven't wired up because frankly this car is so damn noisy you wouldn't hear it anyway. So you might have noticed the crucifix that we shot earlier. This came with the car. I took this out of the car and the damn thing broke down. It split a fuel line which I had to replace, which was a two minute job, but nonetheless had me scratching my head for a, a moment. And when I put it back in, the car worked. And whenever I take that crucifix out, the damn car doesn't work. So I'm pretty sure there's some kind of Catholic voodoo, Italian Vatican shizzle going on with this thing that it needs a little bit of Italy inside it to keep it moving.
This is a city car. We're bombing around in the countryside and I live in the countryside. But if I go into the city, I do like to take this because it still does very well what it was originally designed to do. You can kind of park it anywhere and it's so small and cheeky, you can just stuff it into traffic and people will forgive you. And it gets a smile. I've been very fortunate to drive some interesting things in my time at Carfection prior to that. And honestly speaking, this gets attention like nothing else. You park it up, everybody wants to have a bit of a laugh, and it's a little car that makes not only me happy, but everybody else happy in a way without having to be willy-waving or, you know, flashing your V8 hypercar nonsense at them. This is also a car that I bought with my head because when it was new, it cost 400 quid. Now it's probably worth 10 to 20 times that and they're going up in value. The insurance costs less than a tank of fuel in most mainstream cars and there's no annual inspection, no MOT for this because it's over a certain age. Yeah, it's a death trap, but it's gonna be my death if I get it wrong. You do have to learn how to drive this smoothly and that's so rewarding, you don't get that in new cars. New cars are so damn easy to drive. And I could have bought other cars from 72. There were plenty of other cars made then that caught my eye. I wanted something air-cooled. I wanted something tiny to fit my little garage at home and preferably rear-wheel drive. And after my Alfa Romeo went, I still had a yearning for something Italian. So really, this was the choice I made with my head as well as my heart. And I'm glad that I did because I think 1972, that was a pretty good year.